All right. Good afternoon. Good morning. Fuck you. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So here's 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 a pretty cool idea about um, uh, in Buddhism. There's an idea about uh, called dukkha. So it's one of the principles in Buddhism that life itself or existence is uh, primarily this. Uh, there it contains this element of dukkha, which is what's mistranslated into English as being unsatisfactoriness, suffering, things like that. Um, maybe a better translation of that would be obligation. And uh, not just obligation, but obligation that one cannot fulfill. Uh, another way of putting dukkha would be that cycle of action that one uh, cannot finish. That one is uh, perpetually starting or perpetually in the middle of that one can never uh, finish. Uh, you know, so obligation is, uh, or a debt would be a good example of that. So, for example, like if one uh, owed one's mother, you know, five dollars but uh, could never really uh, earn up enough money to pay it back, you would, the sense of debt is essentially a good example of this idea called dukkha. Um, so, in all things, uh, you know, in, in, in economically expanding or maybe uh, looking, looking at dukkha economically, uh, it's basically just obligation. And obligation is not, is not a problem as long as there's uh, a way to uh, fulfill the obligation. When, when a contract or when an agreement is fulfilled um, mutually, both parties or all parties involved will finish cycle on the transaction. For example, it's worth noting that fiat money itself is a debt-based unit uh, of account. And so uh, the joke of fiat money is that it's supposed to be a symbol of production, but he who holds it um, <laughs> incurs more debt to the society in that fiat money can survive when the richest people uh, or those who control the fiat money supply um, are the, also the most intelligent and the most kind and benevolent. Um, those two factors combine to be, uh, you know, the most productive. So fiat money works as long as, um, as it's used to just reinvest back into the society for, for production. But what happens is, is that it, it ends up creating obligations that can never be fulfilled. And this brings about an economic dukkha for the people. And it gets to the point where ultimately in the point where an individual is no longer willing to exchange his um, services for uh, that debt-based instrument, instrument, then uh, you'll see that that's the final signs that it's no longer a symbol of, of, of people's labor. And uh, it's not no longer going to be used to exchange, right? So yeah, so very interesting, you know. Um, now, it's, it's also worth noting that even in a gold, in a, a gold back uh, system, it's not an escape from obligation. Um, also, you know, uh, there, there's gold note standards, uh, which create, you know, pieces of paper around gold, which are also not a guarantee of the fulfillment of obligation. But for sure, no, no doubt, the missing factor is is in this is that he who holds the most fiat um, is owned the most by the society and so those who pursue you know fiat uh, in terms of you know imagined uh, personal wealth or glory or you know amazing uh, admiration from others or fame or you know things like that are not aware of this um, obligation that goes back to the society when you uh, basically accept 
a whole shit ton of fiat money and and this includes in any mortgage any credit uh any credit cards any debt anytime you agree to access credit in the fiat system you're incurring much more than just a financial obligation back to the society and if you fail to realize that uh this dukkha uh is is right there in your face and uh so it's true that uh you know life could be considered to be basically suffering because it could be the accumulation of of obligations that one is not aware of but being aware of the obligations that one is accumulating and that one that one has can lead to the uh, the avoidance of suffering and happiness because one can fulfill his obligations. You know, ultimately, if you fulfilled all all of your obligations, you'd be free from dukkha, and you would be free from uh, the physical world, and uh, mother, and fiat money, and all that kind of stuff. So. It's not that fiat money is uh, necessarily not sustainable. It's when people no longer want to work for it because of the amount of responsibility that you incur by, uh, by taking it on. So those who take on the most amount of fiat money uh, end up owing these massive amounts of production that they can basically, uh, you know, in their own mind, in their own ethical standard, can never pay back, you know. And so wealthy, the wealthiest people in a fiat system feel the most degraded. And they feel the need to withdraw from the society for, fe for fear that people will look at them and see that they're really not worthy. Uh, they didn't accumulate that fiat money based on great skill or great beauty or great aesthetic or great benevolence. And so the money, you know, becomes a symbol of degradation, no longer as a symbol of production. This can happen, though, in a gold standard. So sound money is not necessarily freeing you of all obligations. Um, you know, so that, that you know, that, that's one, one reason why the gold bug himself is, is incredibly degraded, is that he's basically a hoarder. Um, he's, not, he's, he's not as much of a... Of, you know, he doesn't accumulate quite as much economic obligation as the fiat money guy, but he still denies his, uh, his role in the society. Um, he's better off to become something like an agorist or something where he, he's uh, in production or in, um, you know, in uh, some kind of communication, you know, with the people. But the gold standard degraded because of this is that people wanted to hoard their gold um, and get away, build themselves an island. You know, you see the libertarian, um, you know, who wants to get away from everybody and go and live off the grid, but he still can't escape the obligation of dukkha. And so that's why uh, ultimately in the, you know, the monks were, have always been advised they're not supposed to be uh, going off and growing their own food. Um, it's not that growing your own food is bad. It's just that um, it, there's a there's an there's a chance that you might try to become an island unto yourself, and the minute you be, try to become an island unto yourself, you um, dukkha will crush you, because there really is no such thing in in this universe. Um, you could say that the state of unsatisfactoriness is is the attempt to make an island. So it's a bit of a paradox in this in this universe, but economically, dukkha is the uh, uh, is best understood with the obligation, and pr pr specifically the unseen obligation. Is that um, it? It would take uh, some kind of you know super powered individual to uh, undo the debts of society. And that would bring it back to life. That if if the society uh, decided that it would be, you know, this could somehow fulfill its obligations, and uh, you know, acquire skill and um, good feeling, uh, it it would become willing again to participate and to service itself. 
and you'd have a thriving society. So thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon.